And joining us now are Dr. Wangler's second wife, Esther, and his son, Aaron. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning, Good morning. Chris. I know watching that piece, you're shaking your head a lot, both of you, just kind of in disbelief. Let me ask you, if a jury was able to find him guilty as quickly as they did, how come you seem to think that he is so innocent? There's a lot that didn't come out in the trial, Chris. Um, and if the prosecution was really interested in the truth, they would have tested the samples of Kathy's lung tissue. First of all, they withheld the fact that they had these samples from the defense, even though they required by law to disclose any exculpatory evidence to us. Secondly, they say that they never tested the lung tissue samples, but if their theory is that Kathy was breathing in particles of engine exhaust, unspecified engine exhaust, at the time of her death, surely that would tell the story, wouldn't it? But this jury took them a little less than two weeks for the case, less than nine hours to convict him. Yes. Why didn't they see any of this? Why didn't those questions, why weren't those suspicions raised? I really don't think the jury understood the instructions for fully about uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. There was a great deal of theatrics, a great deal of bias in the investigation that uh, continued into the courtroom. Yeah, Aaron, that was your mother. Kathy was your mom. Yes. Um, what troubled you the most as this trial continued to unfold? I just, it's such a disbelief still that all this is happening and just, I don't feel like like Esther said, people really understood the science went behind it with our test witnesses and everything. I just felt like the jury didn't even comprehend what they were saying and even get the logic behind it. And it's just hard to still face the facts of what's happening with our life. Yeah, but as an anesthesiologist, which he was, he would have knowledge to commit a crime like this. Is it safe to say? No, no. no. When have you had surgery and had carbon monoxide mentioned and as an anesthetic? Yeah, but... That's absurd. It's an absurd premise. Absolutely. But it seems to be a premise that the jury bought into. It, it, you know, the jury was part of the local community, which was saturated with, saturated with biased hearsay and, and half-truths in yeah. the local media. Um, yet our change of venue motion was denied by the judge. So they were exposed to all kinds of information uh, ahead of time. And people have the, the belief that anesthesiologists gas people, which isn't what they do now. They, they typically use uh, IVs and inject drugs that way. As far as the appeal process, yes. now, you're running into some, uh, some obstacles there. Yes, we are. Um, in order to file the appeal, we must have the official transcript. The person who is typing that official transcript is the wife of the lead detective. It's a clear conflict of interest, but it's something the court refuses to address. She says it will take her at least six months to type this transcript. In neighboring counties in Ohio, it's required to be done within two weeks. Aaron, have you had a chance to, to speak to your dad I at all? Um, yeah, I've talked weeks? to him once since the whole trial and everything, but we email every week and everything, too. And what's he saying? You know, he's keeping optimistic, positive, um, praying a lot, you know, just hoping that this whole process starts taking place and that we can get justice, which was not served. But you both sit here and you're, 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 vehement, you're vehemently, I guess, support the fact that, that an innocent man is in jail right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, we thank you both for taking the time and joining us. Thank, thank you. We do appreciate it.